If you're suffering from a chronic health condition and you're doing your best to heal leaky gut, but you haven't investigated whether you have leaky gums, you may never get where you want to go. What? Leaky gums? What's that? Your oral hygiene, the health of your mouth, directly impacts your systemic health. If you aren't just as diligent about learning about how to promote healthy gums and a healthy mouth as you are in promoting a healthy gut, you may never get where you want to go in terms of achieving optimal health. Research shows that leaky gums or chronic periodontitis can drive systemic issues such as heart disease, respiratory disease, miscarriages, and autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, Crohn's, or Sjogren's. Today I want to teach you about leaky gums, about how you could have oral dysbiosis, and how that could contribute to not only gum disease in the mouth, but systemic inflammation and systemic disease throughout your body. I'm Dr. John Bartimus. And I'm putting the pieces together to help you live a life at optimal. How does your oral health tie into your global health? Is there such a thing as leaky gums? And if so, how is that resulting in potential autoimmunity or heart disease or liver issues or colon cancer? There are many studies connecting oral hygiene or the lack of oral hygiene with systemic diseases from heart disease to cancer to autoimmunity. And the way that that happens is that just like you want to have a healthy gut and not have leaky gut because you have a gut microbiome consisting of bacteria, virus, yeast, worms, and parasites, you also have an oral microbiome consisting of various microbes. Just like an imbalance in the gut microbiome called gut dysbiosis can lead to diseases of the gut and systemic diseases, so can dysbiosis of the oral microbiome, oral dysbiosis, lead to local disease in the mouth or systemic disease throughout the body. We want to understand oral dysbiosis and its role in systemic disease because if you have an unhealthy mouth and you're suffering from chronic illness but you're not promoting oral hygiene as part of your recovery you may never get the recovery you desire. Gingivitis is a very very common issue in the adult population and even in the child population due to the ubiquitousness of sugars and, and um, antibiotic use and uh, artificial sweeteners and cosmetics and different chemicals in our food supply and in our environment. So gingivitis is the beginnings of gum disease and it could progress to periodontitis which is chronic gum disease. Gingivitis is the first step and is reversible if you catch it soon enough and practice oral hygiene and change your lifestyle. Periodontitis has irreversible stages so that once you get too far you may not be able to reverse it but you could halt progression. So we want to obviously from a functional medicine standpoint catch things as early as possible. So I want to walk you through the stages of healthy teeth, gingivitis, periodontitis and how that could tie into systemic disease. So here we have our normal tooth setup. Okay, so I'm showing you half a tooth here. So this is half a tooth. This is the gum line, the pink, or the, the oral mucosa. This brown part is the root of the tooth. So if you get a root canal, they're working down here. This part right here, this is the bony cap that is holding your tooth in place. Okay, so remember, this is half a tooth. So we're taking a cross section. Up here we have the beginnings of some biofilm formation on your tooth. And down here at the gingival line where the gums meet the tooth, the blue dots are neutrophils. The, that's our immune system in our mouth. And the neutrophils are performing surveillance. So what we have to understand is that 
we don't have any sterile surface. Our teeth have microbes just like our gut, just like our skin, just like our genital urinary system, just like everywhere. So there's this constant communication and constant balancing act between the host immune response, my immune system, and the microbes or the microbiome in the site we're talking about. So in the mouth, there's a constant dance going on between our immune system and the bacteria, viruses, other microbes in the mouth. So the neutrophils should be there. We want them there because they're communicating and they're, they're interacting with the oral microbes. So in a healthy mouth, we have aerobic microbes communicating with our immune system. They're saying, hey man, what's up? Good to see you, have a nice day. No harm, no foul, no one's mad at each other, okay? But if you introduce sugar, if you introduce poor oral hygiene, if you uh, don't take care of yourself, the friendly bacteria, the symbionts, could turn into pathobionts or bad bacteria. Or the change in tissue and the environment of the mouth could attract pathobionts or bad bacteria, anaerobic bacteria. So they're, they love a non-oxygen environment and those are bad guys. So this is a good environment. Notice that there are, are normal levels of biofilm in a healthy mouth. Okay, The healthy bacteria will produce biofilms that are not a problem. They're, they create just a touch of inflammation which basically pings our immune system to say hey we're here but we're not bad and that dance goes on. Now if we're, if we're exposed to things that drive poor oral hygiene, antibiotic, or excuse me, poor oral health, antibiotics, high sugar diet, alcohol, chemicals, if we're not brushing and flossing, we're not practicing good oral hygiene, then we can develop gingivitis. In gingivitis, you see now a stronger development of biofilm, a thicker biofilm. We see recruitment of more neutrophils and we start to see B cells, macrophages, and T lymphocytes develop in the gingival layer and you have inflammation in the gingiva. So you can see here there's more separation of the gingiva from the tooth than in the healthy situation. So when you're at your dentist and they're probing you, right, they're probing you to measure the depth of the pockets right there between your tooth and the gingiva. And so the deeper that pocket, the less healthy. If you ever brush your teeth or floss and your teeth bleed, that's a sign of gingivitis. Okay, you're, you're early on the spectrum uh, in oral decay and potentially oral dysbiosis. Why is gingivitis important beyond just the, the local tooth health? Well, as the gingiva pulls away, as the gingivitis occurs, itis means inflammation, so as we have inflammation of the gingiva, that dance between bugs in our immune system starts to get faster or get more intense and now we have we're recruiting more immune players that aren't typically there in a healthy environment so the potential for bad things to happen increases for inflammation to happen increases and as the gingiva separates we create this pocket where before in the healthy environment when we have aerobic microbes now we may have microbes get down deep that are anaerobic Anaerobic means they don't need oxygen to live and they love a non-oxygen environment. And those are the bugs that create issues for us. Like Fusobacterium nucleatum, like Porphyromonas gingivalis. So these guys create an inflammatory environment and start to cause gingivitis and cause your hygienist or your dentist to say, hey, you need to floss better, you need to brush better and more. Maybe, hopefully, dentist is talking about changing your diet as well for tooth health. This is the reversible stage. This is the gingivitis stage. If we don't do better here, now we progress to periodontitis. And you can see here, from healthy, the good attachment of the gingiva to the teeth, all the way to unhealthy, we've got a separation the farther we go. Now you can see in periodontitis, you've got a deep, what's called periodontal pocket, where the gingiva is completely separated from the tooth, and the biofilm has extended all the way down subgingivally, right, beneath where we can see in the mouth, and creating this deep periodontal pocket, biofilm rich in anaerobic bacteria that are pro-inflammatory bad guys. 
and it's impacting the root of the tooth. So this could result in tooth decay where you need a, a, a tooth pulled and a root canal. And remember, they give you antibiotics when you get a root canal. Why? Well, because you have a deep periodontal pocket, they don't want these bacteria jumping into the bloodstream and getting on the highway to the rest of your body and creating an issue. And they also don't want local infection in an abscessed tooth. Notice in periodontitis, as it progresses, you have bone loss as well. So previously the gingivitis was mostly an issue at the gum line, but now as periodontitis develops and progresses, now we're losing bone. So the bony uh, structure that's holding the tooth in place starts to get resorbed. We have recruitment of macrophages or osteoclasts, which are the bones, the uh, immune cells that break down bone. So as the inflammation progresses, as the oral dysbiosis progresses, as the biofilms get thicker, bad things happen to the teeth and systemically because when you're this deep, when you're in that periodontal pocket, as we said, those microbes now have access to the peripheral circulation. So research has shown species like Fusobacterium nucleatum and Porphyromonas gingivalis can hop in that bloodstream and go systemically and cause endotoxemia and maybe attach to the heart and cause infectious endocarditis. Maybe they go to the gut and promote dysbiosis and promote colon cancer. Maybe they uh, drive the dysfunctional immune system so that antibodies are created, citrullinated antibodies, and RA develops or is contributed to, could contribute to Sjogren's, to Crohn's, to lupus as studies have shown. So if you are worried about leaky gut because it can contribute to multiple issues with health, multiple diseases, but you're not thinking about your oral health, I hope this video motivates you to think about leaky gums as well because leaky gums can be just as bad as a leaky gut if you've got microbes jumping on the circulatory superhighway to go to other spots of the body and drive chronic illness, drive autoimmunity, drive cancer. So what do we do to prevent this? What's your dentist been telling you your whole life? What's your mom been asking you your whole life? Did you brush your teeth when you woke up? Did you brush your teeth before bed? Have you flossed today? Okay, so baseline oral hygiene is going to be huge. You want to floss daily, you want to brush daily. Then from a nutrition standpoint, we want to do all the things we've talked about before, right? Low sugar diet, high fruits and vegetable diet, um, an anti-inflammatory diet, right? All those things are important for oral health. We want to have low to no alcohol. We want to avoid um, GMO food. We want to avoid chemical laden food. Okay. We want to avoid antibiotics unless absolutely necessary because they impact the microbiome everywhere, not just the gut, but the mouth, the skin, the potential is there to impact the microbiome at every site. So oral hygiene is going to be huge in preventing or recovering from systemic inflammatory diseases like heart disease, like cancer, like autoimmune disease. If your plan does not in include at least investigating the mouth and addressing it if it's there, then we may not get where we need to go. Now I've made multiple films on biofilms. Remember biofilms are the Igloos are the protective layers that bacteria hide under to hide from our immune system, to hide from antibiotics. If you need a refresher on that, I will link to a biofilm video that I've done recently to give you that refresher. But what you want to remember is that biofilms aren't going to be as susceptible to antibiotics and natural antimicrobials like free swimming bacteria. So we need to mechanically disrupt these biofilms. Flossing helps with that. Um, your regular dental visits helps with that. Then there are biofilm disruptors that you can take naturally to help break these down, which help deliver the antibiotics more efficiently or the herbal antimicrobials more efficiently so you can clear these out. So wrapping it up, if you have chronic disease and you've done everything you know to, to improve and you haven't, Perhaps this is a missing link for you. Perhaps oral hygiene, oral dysbiosis is a perpetuator of your chronic inflammation. And if you bring in things like brushing, flossing, mouth rinses, biofilm disruptors, 
um, natural antimicrobials, regular visits to your dentist, you may get on top of your issue like you never have before and return to a quality of life that you desire and a life at optimal.